and a pleasant good evening and welcome to another edition of Beyond History where we explore faith through history. This time around, we're going to explore the crimson thread which leads to the cross, which leads to salvation. And we'll do so with Dr. Michael Sprague. You'll enjoy hearing from him and so will I as we continue in just a moment with Beyond History. Welcome back to Beyond History. Ken Trahan joined by Dr. Michael Sprigg. And Mike, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to the show. Good to be here. All right, let's talk about you a little bit. First and foremost, president of Grace Adventures. Tell us about that. Well, that's a nonprofit that reaches out to political and business leaders, one leader at a time. Most people throw rocks at leaders, but leaders need encouragement just like anyone else. And that's what you try to accomplish with this. And you feel like it's fulfilling? Absolutely. I, I'm amazed at how there's a mission field with leaders all over the state, and it's a privilege to work with so many. You're also a chaplain, and you serve as a chaplain on a statewide basis. Talk about that, that experience itself, and what you do specifically. Well, I lead the Bible study at the Capitol with the House of Representatives. Uh, I lead a group with lobbyists and staffers at the Capitol, and then move around the state and work with leaders both here and in Washington, D.C. When you experience what you do at the Capitol, do you see partisanship that makes it difficult to relate, or do you see people that have different points of view that are at least respectful of each other? Well, my groups have half Republicans, half Democrats, so they come together, build relationships, and sometimes I think things can happen through Jesus that could never happen through politics. It's something we all pray about on a daily basis, because regardless of what our persuasions are, and where we come from, and what we adhere to, and what we believe, we just see such a discord amongst the people today, and such polarizing language and hostility that seems to exist. Well, I don't know that the kingdom of God will ever arrive on Air Force One, no matter who the president is. Mm -hmm. But through a change of hearts and minds, I believe there can be a revitalization of this country. And again, we should always be tolerant of everyone. We should never compromise what we believe. There are two different things, tolerance and compromise. But to tolerate is to love, and that's what the Bible commands us to do. To compromise is what we should never do because we should always adhere to what we believe. That's a wonderful way to put it. All right, let's talk a little bit about what really means the most to you. You call it the crimson thread. Talk about that, if you will. Well, I love having seekers and spiritual investigators come to my home or get together with them. People kicking the tires of the faith. One time I had someone show up at my house and they looked all around and they thought, this isn't what I expected your house to look like. And I said, out of curiosity, what'd you expect? And they said, well, religious paintings, relics and statues. They were thinking religiosity. But then the people, the person said this, I hear so many people all my life talking about the cross but I've never understood why. Mm -hmm. The cross is the greatest hoax ever put upon the human race, or it's the greatest story ever told because it has the capacity to transform a human life and alter an eternity. In this segment, I wanna look at what I call the crimson thread and look at its historicity and its significance. And obviously the, the cross is where it all happens. It's where it all starts. It's where it all ends because, as Jesus said, it is finished uh, in his dying words, at least for a couple of days before he rose from the dead. So, as you mentioned, you either accept this as the jumping off point of your faith or you reject it and say this is bogus. Uh, there is no in between. There's either Jesus and there's the resurrection or there's nothing, correct? That's correct. But what I found is this goes all the way back to the very beginning of human history, which is in the garden, in paradise, there's Adam and Eve. And God made it very clear when he says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, every tree of the garden is a yes tree. Take your choice. But there's one tree that's a no tree. And he said, in the day that you eat from that tree, you shall surely die. Got it, Adam? Got it, Eve? And they got it. Then we find in Genesis chapter 3 that the serpent came along and tempted them and said, you shall surely not die. And his temptation was 
that if you eat from that tree, you will become like God. And it was kind of tempting to Adam and Eve and to us as well to become like God and they ate. And when they did, they felt that uncomfortable gaze and they ran and they hid and they covered themselves with fig leaves and they were naked and felt ashamed. And God looked at that and it was so inadequate and all of creation looked and said, are they going to be struck dead or will God pretend it never happened? And what happened was, in an obscure verse, Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, God took an animal and brought forth an animal skin and clothed Adam and Eve. And you can only imagine in a garden where there'd never been any death, Adam and Eve must have been horrified as they heard the scream of the animal and those uncomfortable, awkward quivers, and then the stillness of death. But they learned right away the seriousness of sin that they learned what I call the crimson thread, that an innocent third party would stand in the place of the guilty, satisfying the laws of justice so that the guilty party could go free because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. When you look at Old Testament scripture, Michael, you see prophecy displaying itself virtually everywhere. Prophecy that Jesus would fulfill in his life. And I know some scoffers would say, well, he was just trying to fulfill it, trying to copy what he read, but the reality was that he followed it to a T, and the lineage, everything that he did, certainly reflected this striking prophecy. Some of the words are almost uh, just strikingly haunting with the way he became flesh and the way he lived his life. Talk about that, if you will, and, and how it strengthens and emboldens your faith. Well, I love to see this crimson thread painted throughout all of the Old Testament. You move from the garden and let's advance up to the time of the Exodus. Here's the children of Israel, 430 years in captivity and God hears their cries. And he brings 10 plagues, but the last one is the death angel. But with that justice, he offers grace as well. He says that if you take an animal, a, a lamb, an unblemished lamb, and if you paint the blood over the doorpost of your home, the death angel will pass over. And you can imagine a dad taking his little boy out to the flock and the little boy saying, what are we looking for, dad? The prize lamb, the unblemished lamb. And they find it and the little boy sees his dad taking the lamb to the woodshed and pulling out the knife. And the little boy says, what are you gonna do, dad? What's the lamb done wrong? And the dad says, nothing, son, but it's either you or it's the lamb. And I'm taking the lamb. The little boy turns his head and they paint the blood up over the doorpost. And the little boy the next day when he hears the cries all throughout Egypt knew the seriousness of sin, but he also learned about the crimson thread, that an innocent third party would take the place of the guilty, satisfying the demands of justice so that the guilty could go free and be forgiven. And you advance to the book of Leviticus and you get the whole sacrificial system where day after day after day, priest would kill lambs and blood would be spilled in fact, the historian Josephus says in the first century that on the day of Passover alone, 250,000 lambs were slain on that one day alone. And the blood would pour from the temple down into a brook and run down the Kidron Valley. And it's very possible that Jesus stepped over or had to wade through that blood on the way to the Garden of Gethsemane. Advance to the book of Isaiah, 700 years BC. And the prophet said that there was one who was going to come, that the people heard and they listened and scratched their head because it sounded like it was going to be a man and not an animal. Advanced to the first century, John the Baptist, he was preaching one day to the multitudes and he said in John 1, 29, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He said that man is the promised Lamb the perfect lamb, the one all the other lambs had foreshadowed. He's the one who would die for the sins of the world. Then advance three years to Calvary as Jesus was scourged and crucified. Scourging was called the halfway death. A professional executioner would take a whip like this one and bone and metal and rock would be tied into its tips the victim would be tied to a post and lashed 39 times. The flesh would be ripped off. Some said that internal organs could be seen. Many died from a scourging alone. 
Then Jesus took that cross beam and as far as he could carried it up to Calvary. They took a crown of thorns and they jammed it upon his head. They took nails, maybe like these nails, and thrust them into his wrist and his feet. Six hours on a cross. Tiny streams of blood turned into rivers of blood. There on the cross, some cried out obscenities who were crucified, but not Jesus. He simply said things like, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Flies came, birds flew overhead. Finally, Jesus said, it is finished, and he died. His blood was shed. The ultimate innocent third party stood in the place of the guilty, satisfying the demands of justice so that the guilty party could go free. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. It's the Crimson Thread. When we return in just a moment, that's not the end of the story. It's just starting. The Crimson Thread continues as we continue on Beyond History. Welcome back to Beyond History. Ken Trahan with Dr. Michael Sprague and talking about what's most important in his life. And Michael, talk about the significance of the Crimson Thread and what it is in your life, what it means in your life. Well, hoaxer history. I think we've seen as you run through human history that this is anchored in history. It's real. It's not a hoax. But then people have been told that you get your heart right with God through a self-salvation, that you are in full or in part responsible to save yourself. It's the do, do, do plan. It's to keep the list. It's to keep some rules. The gospel is not the do plan, but the done plan. So many people have picked up that God has a great set of scales in the sky, like a friend, a businessman, successful I talked to. He says, I think that's the way it works. Three minutes after you die, there's a great set of scales and your good works get weighed versus your bad works. Whichever one comes out is where you go, heaven or hell. I asked him where he got that. He said, well, in college I was in an, on an LSD trip, and that's the picture that I got, and I've believed it ever since. He said, I don't believe in drugs anymore. But I broke in and I said to him, you're basing your eternity on something you don't even believe in anymore? He said, I've never thought of that. I guess I better think it through. Self-salvation is what many people either into it or they've heard. The Crimson Thread is totally different. It's not the do plan, it's the done plan. It's not the human achievement plan. It's the grace plan, the Jesus plan. That one man, a perfect man, the unblemished lamb, could die on an ancient hill in an obscure part of the world and thereby impact the destinies of every person who's ever lived. The gospel isn't how you get to heaven, it's how you get to know God personally, and then you get heaven thrown in. It's not how bad people get to be good or good people get to be better. It's how dead people spiritually come alive. It's that Jesus is sufficient, he's supreme, he's preeminent, and out of that gospel, we get to be in a place where we're secure, we're significant, we have purpose, we've been cleansed, redeemed, and we become most cherished sons and daughters of the Most High God. It's the gospel, it's the crimson thread, it changes everything. It's the best deal that's ever been offered. Each one of us has our own individual story and experience, and I want you to share your own experience about how you came to that saving grace, how you came to that faith that is strong as can possibly be that sustains you on a daily basis? Well, for many years, I just thought it was that works plan, that do plan. I just kind of picked that up and thought, well, I guess I'm okay compared to some others. But when I was in my late teens, a teacher who I'd known most of my life caught me one day and she said these words. She said, Michael, I'd hate to get to heaven and not see you there. And that made me think. And at that point in my life, even though I had so many things, it was like there was a God-shaped vacuum in my heart. And even though I tried to fill it with many things, something was missing. I thought about that all week long. I went through a Good Friday. 
and the next Sunday was Easter Sunday morning. And finally, my eyes were opened and I realized I could never work my way to God and God didn't grade on the curve. I realized that Jesus did it all, that there was a crimson thread, that God loved me, He loved the whole world, that He gave this Son, that if I believed in Him, I would not perish but have everlasting life. It was that decision that changed my life. It brought forgiveness of sins, a new freedom, and it altered my eternity. It has changed my life. One of the things, Ken, that I love doing is taking an annual pilgrimage to the Vietnam Memorial Wall. I do that once a year, and it's a sacred, somber place. There's people there day and night. It doesn't matter what's going on, there's someone there. One time there was a vet tracing a name, and a reporter, as only reporters can do, went and stuck a microphone in that veteran's face and said, why are you here? Why the emotion? Why is this so important to you? And the veteran simply said, my friend died for me. My friend gave his very best. If a reporter came up to me and said, Michael, why the cross? Uh, why is this so important to you? Why is the emotion? I could simply say, Ken, my friend died for me. Jesus, my Savior, gave his very best. It's transformed my life. It's the grace plan. It's obviously very powerful to you, and I know that it's powerful to me. As you look back on that decision, I'm sure you feel like this was the best decision you've made in your lifetime. A absolutely. But it was a decision that came at a critical point in time. And I think people pause at significant moments to examine their life and think about their soul. But here's one thing I find to be significant. You have to make a choice about Jesus Christ. You can't sit on the fence. And it's not enough just to know the facts of the Crimson Thread. If we were to go back to Egypt when that death angel was coming, and suppose there was a person who heard those words and even believed them to be true. They knew you needed to take the perfect lamb, the unblemished lamb, and paint up the blood. But if that person knew it in their head and believed it, but never got around to painting the blood on the doorpost of their home, they would not have been spared that night. They would not have been delivered, even though they knew so much. It's the same with human beings today. It's not enough just to know the story of the Crimson Thread. It's not enough to even believe it happened in history. You have to apply the blood to the doorpost of your heart. And you do that by faith. Every single person has that opportunity to take God at his word, to understand the story, to believe it's true, but then to transfer trust from the self-salvation plan, the do plan, to the done plan, to trust in the grace plan, that is to trust in the person of Jesus Christ. It's at that very moment that eternity and one's life is absolutely changed. God created man, man sinned, man needed a redeemer. He sent his son Jesus Christ and he bore the brunt for all of us and that's why we live today. Absolutely. I, I once was speaking at a funeral and a man heard about the crimson thread and he thought about his soul because at a funeral everybody gets their mortality bell rung. He rushed up to me and this very successful business person said, could it really be true? Is it really that easy? And I had to say to him, it wasn't easy for the father who had to give up the son. It wasn't easy for the son because he extended his arms. He died in our place. He paid the penalty. In a certain way, it's not even easy for human beings because we have to humble ourselves and stop trusting in ourselves, stop being our own savior and to trust the one and only true Savior, Jesus Christ. But faith is what's required. Faith in Jesus Christ. That's a big amen. We'll return in just a moment. When we do, we'll discuss it. Is this available to everyone? Is it at your disposal? Is it within reach? Is it out of your hands? Stay tuned, I think you'll like the answer as we continue with Beyond History.
and Trey Han with Dr. Michael Sprague as we put a wrap on the Crimson Thread. Michael, how does one come to that saving grace? How does one find what you found, what I've found? Talk about that, if you will. Well, sometimes I tell this story, Ken. A few years back, there was a great ship that went down, the Christina, and over 300 people lost their lives, but a few people lived to tell the story. One person who couldn't swim said, it was terrible, we all went into the water, and it was a cargo ship, and there were all of these pieces that fell into the water as well. I was splashing around and couldn't save myself, but I took one of these things floating, I reached out for it, I pulled it under me, rested my weight upon it, trusted it to save me, and it did. My buddy was going down as well. I pushed him one of these crates as well. He reached out, pulled it under him, rested his weight upon it, trusted it to save me, save him, and it did. He said, here's the sad thing. There were enough crates in the water so that everybody could have been saved, but everybody was out there trying to save themselves. Mm. That's the message of the Crimson Thread. It's not the self-salvation plan, it's the grace plan, the, the truth that the blood was spilled. We can't save ourselves, we need to rest our weight upon Christ. Trust Him and Him alone to forgive us. Trust Him for our destiny. And He promises that He will do just that. It's awesome. The criminals on the cross next to Jesus. One was selfish, said, come down off that cross, save yourself if you're God. The other say, I trust in you. And the response, today you'll be with me in paradise. That's mm -hmm. where we all hope to be, look to be, and look forward to being. Dr. Michael Sprague, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, my friend. God bless you. Thank you. That's Beyond History for this time around. Tune in next time for another educational experience on Beyond History. Until then, I'm Ken Trahan saying thanks for joining us and be a good sport. God bless you one and all. We are rounding third and heading home. So long.